So now I have the pleasure of passing the floor to Kunzik Shamarin Puche, who will deliver the welcome speech. Your Holiness, the 17th Gyalakama Pa Chalanthaya Doji, and His Excellency Devanand Konwar, the Governor of Bihar State, Venerable Chandila, the Chief Monk of Bodhgaya, Bihar, <coughs> Venerable Rinpoches, the esteemed guests from Himalayas, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Europe, and America, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I thank you all for joining us for today's historic celebration. I will first take this opportunity to explain to you the benefit and importance of this ceremony. It is important to note that this is a once-in-a-lifetime celebration for all of us here today. Actually, we have organized this event to take the precious opportunity to recall in reverence and great veneration the source and the continued stream of blessings in this remarkable lineage of the Karma Kaju as established by the first Karmapa Dusun Champa. The benefit of such an event is that when you think of this great Bodhisattva, you will receive his blessings of his limitless power of wishes as if he were truly present here and now. Therefore, this is why we have all gathered here to participate in this great supplication of Dusum Champa and his lineage of the Karmakaju. <coughs> Dusum Champa was born in East Tibet, <coughs> a place called Tehor. He was born into a simple agricultural family. When he was a small child, he had already began to perform many miracles. He used to proclaim while tending the flocks that I have come to this world to liberate sentient beings. I came here to look after them as I do these sheep. When he came to the age of 16, he took novice vows of monk and began his formal education in Buddhist studies. At the age of 20, <clears throat> he met the great master Palchen Kalopa and Chaba Chuch Singe. Through the training with the masters, he became a great Buddhist scholar. He later met Rechungpa, one of the two chief disciples of Tibet's great yogi Milarepa, and received from him the Vajrayana instructions of the lineage of Marpa and Milarepa. Afterward, he met the great masters Gambopa, the chief disciple of Milarepa, and became his student. Gambopa announced upon the 500 among the 500 advanced practitioners that the Dusum Chamba is not just any ordinary human being. He is pretending to be a disciple of me in order to hold my lineage for future sentient beings, but in actually he has already accomplished the goal of the path. Gambopa revealed that Dusum Chamba is the great Bodhisattva who wears the black crown and was prophesied by Buddha Shakyamuni in, 
in sutras return to liberate, liberate sentient beings. Dusun Chamba lived and taught for 85 years in Tibet. Before his passing, he left a will for his disciples saying that in order to preserve and spread these teachings, I will reincarnate again. As his will had stated, the second Kamapa appeared in this world. Introducing himself as a reincarnation of Kamapa at a very young age. <clears throat> and the second Kamapa, Kamapakshi, known as in the history of Tibet. And China as a great Mahasiddha. <clears throat> The story behind his fame is as follows. Karma Pakshi was invited to China by the Emperor Kublai Khan. The Emperor ordered Karma Pakshi not to teach to the people that the Emperor found unfavorable. With a sharp tongue, Karma Pa refused the Emperor's demand and replying that I'm here for all sentient beings, not only for one man. Due to this challenge to the emperor, he was put to try. And during the trial, Kamapakshi performed many miracles in front of the court, and as hard as they tried, they failed in every attempt to punish him. Finally, Kublai Khan had to surrender and bow to Karmapakshi and invite him back to his palace as the emperor's guru. The third Karmapa Rangjung Doji also taught many people in Tibet. He was the teacher of Galwa Longchenpa, the founder of the seven treasures tradition of the Nyingmapa school. Such was Longchenpa's <clears throat> devotion to the third Karmapa that he requested that when you be the sixth Buddha to appear in this world, I pray and ask that you pray for me as well to be your first student. The third Karmapa was an accomplished scholar and composed the treatise Samun Nangdan that is famous for its profound clarity on the Buddhist philosophy of how the mind functions through the ner nerve system. Incidentally, this masterpiece of the Buddhist literature can serve in these modern times as a bridge between Buddhist theory of the function of mind and neuroscience. The third Kamapa was also invited by the Emperor of Chinese, the Yun Dynasty, Yun Sung Tsung, or in Mongolian language it's known as a Togan Termon. Why are Third Karmapa was teaching to his disciple, the emperor, and his court. And one day, the Karmapa announced that he would be leaving them. Immediately after proclaiming his departure, he covered his head with his robe and passed away silently. The following day was a full moon, and as the moon rose in the sky that evening, the Karmapa's face could be seen inside the moon by all who gaze at the sky that night. The emperor commissioned a painting of this event, which has become a treasure of Chinese history and art of this day. The fourth Karmapa, Rolve Doji, initiated the great Tibetan scholar Jetsuankapa and while giving the initial five precepts vows, spontaneously announced that he would open the doorway of Buddhist teachings in all ways, which proved to be a very accurate prophecy 
about this patent saint of the later to be the most famous and formed Gelugpa tradition. The fifth Karmapa, Dejin Shikpa, among all the Karmapas, was an extraordinary Lama in Tibet and China. He was respected by all the Tibetan spiritual leaders as well as kings in Tibet. He was also invited by the first emperor of the Ming dynasty of China, Tai Ming Yonglu, to give teachings in Beijing. At the em emperor's request, Karmapa gave 18 consecutive days of teachings. On each day, miracle sights to behold of colorful clouds and rainbows appeared in the sky for all to witness. To commemorate this, the emperor of the Ming dynasty commissioned the best painters to copy the scenes observed during these teachings, and he had instructions to accompany this new famous painting written in four different languages, Chinese, Tibetan, Mongolian, and Turkish. The painting can still be seen today in a museum of Lhasa, Tibet. <coughs> the emperor, disciple of the fifth Karmapa, tried very hard to unify Buddhism in Tibet under one school, <coughs> that is to say, under the Kamakaju as the supreme lineage. However, after several times, the emperor was persuaded by the Kamapa's strong disapproval of the emperor's naive suggestions. All Kamapas have had a very unique and profound way of expressing their activity to help sentient beings in their lifetimes. The qualities of the lineage of Karmapa. The first Karmapa, Dusun Champa, emphasized the qualities of meditation. Therefore, the Karmakaju school became one of the prominent schools in Buddhist studies for meditation in particular. Later, during the lives of the seventh through the twelfth Karmapas, the Karmakaju school became the richest Buddhist culture in Tibet, having their own distinct expressions of art known as Karma Gadi, a highly developed system of astrological views and philosophy, methods for studying Sanskrit through the Tibetan language, advanced medicine practice, a unique system of logic, and so on. All of this was accompanied by an exceptionally complex understanding from the perspective of the Kamakaryu school of the tradition Buddhists, categories of studies such as Madhyamika, <coughs> the Abhidharma, Vinaya, Pragyana Paramita, and so on, which was the core subject taught by the great masters such as Nagarjuna, Asanga, Basubandhu, Dharmakiti, and others of Nalanda University in Bihar upon 1600s. We celebrate the first Karmapa Dusum Chambers in memory today so that we may rejoice in the Bodhisattva's commitments that he made for all sentient beings. Actually, Buddhism is not a religion, but teaching of Lord Buddha Shakyamuni, which teaches perfect moral ethics, compassion, and a very profound way to meditate, to control and eliminate the affliction of mind. Therefore, it has been and it will be the main cause to improve human relationship to unify the world. We do so this blessed place 
where the Buddha himself was enlightened. May the merit generated here today spread throughout the world as a source of relief to eliminate all the natural disasters, to stop all the wars, famine, crimes, and injustice. May peace and finally ultimate peace prevail for one and all. Thank you very much again for all of you present here and I wish all a very happy new year. Thank you.